Hello my friends, my name is Rima Orr and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to distinguish from a thought that comes from your ego or your lower mind or a thought that comes from your higher guidance or from your higher mind. We're going to talk about the differences between the two and we're going to talk about how we can easily shift from an ego-oriented mindset into a highly spiritual, intuitive mindset. So, stay tuned. One method to understand how our guides actually contact us and understand if it's from our ego or from our guidance is to know that our guidance is persistent. For example, if we have heard about a specific new book that came out from a specific author or a new mentor that came out from a friend and we hear about it again next week, then we know that we are being pulled in that direction and we should actually do something about that. The spiritual practitioner knows that it needs to follow the clues that are being left there. The ego will come and say, no, I don't need to read another book. I have that knowledge. So the clues that are being left by our higher self, by our guidance, will be repetitive. In other words, they will come. In the beginning, if we don't notice them, they'll be subtle. And afterwards, it will be like a push. And then when we actually don't listen and it's something that is really, really big in our life, it can even come in a form of a disease, in a, come, uh, in a form of losing a lot of money or something bad that happens to you that makes you question, why is it happening to me? And that thought, when you trace it back, will trace you back to whatever it is that your guides are trying to tell you or the things that you actually need to do. For example, when I am guided, I easily intuitively feel it. Uh, because I see that certain things in my life are beginning to be disaligned. And in the, in the past, when I wasn't as connected to my guidance, I suffered from it. I suffered losses, heartbreaks, I didn't listen to the things that were just in front of me, and then I understood that those things are the things that my ego wanted, and not necessarily the things that I wanted. And you, you know what the ego wants. It wants to, be, wants to be recognized. It wants to know that he's special. It wants to succeed in, in business, in relationships. It wants to have more instead of to be more. And when we're talking about the differences in our thoughts, think about, is my thought pure? Does my thought come from love? Or does it come from anger or from envy, jealousy? Does it come because I'm comparing myself to somebody else? Does it come because I'm not happy with the th way things are right now? And then you will understand that it comes much more from the ego. Now, when you learn to filter out a lot of your ego's requests, because as soon as you become aware, and this is already happening right now, because your ego is threatened by a video that talks about how do I distinguish between my ego and my higher self or my guidance. And once the ego recognizes that, it says, no, 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 all this is bullshit. Don't listen to that. That didn't work in the past. You're a failure. Forget about that. You know? the ego will try to do all those, all those manipulations. And when you become awake and aware to those manipulations, you just treat it like a little baby. You just you know, put it in your right hand and say, you know something, I understand this is what you want. I no longer reflect myself with your decisions and I just let you go. And it's okay, I love you, you're a part of me, I need you sometimes, but you are not the master of me. You, know, you are no longer running the show. First, let us define. The ego is a construct that is a part of us here. We have to have it. We can minimize it. In other words, we can become the observer of our ego and don't identify with the program that the ego, that most of the population right now has. But you should also understand the ego can be a friend and can be a nemesis. In other words, it likes to keep us in our comfort zone. Therefore, it will create different thoughts. It will create different beliefs that will make us stay where we are. And of course, our comfort zone is the zone where we don't mature, we don't grow, we don't expand. So the whole idea is to become the observer of that. Our guidance, on the other hand, is that part of us that is in the 5D, you can call it, our higher self, that knows and sees a bigger picture of our life, our past, our present, and our future. It knows how to align itself and give us little clues and hints. Each person individually gets his own clues and hints as to where we should go, using our synchronicity, using our intuition, sometimes using our dreams, there's different methods of trying to contract our guides. Sometimes people do it in a meditative state, but those that are more advanced, that all they need to do is close their eyes and ask a question. Now, the differences between an answer that comes from our guidance 
or from our ego is that the first answer that you're going to get, the first answer that you're going to get as you are formulating the question comes from your guidance, your higher self, your intuition, however you want to call it. The second answer is going to come from your ego. Now, let me, let me explain by example. A lot of you are already in very long uh, committed relationships. Ask yourself, just ask yourself, am I still in love with my partner? Okay. As I have asked the question, the first answer that came was the real true answer. The second answer is the answer that we don't like to hear. And that usually is the answer that we will keep. For example, if we said that, you know something, it's been 15 years, I'm not sure I'm in love with my partner. If we were in love, it would be like, oh, yes, you know something, I am, we're so fit to one another. It would be like a direct yes. But if we said no, our ego said, ah, but you know, you are in this partnership and then all the excuses and all the thoughts and all the additional belief that need to come in order to convert that, that strong no that we got in the beginning into a strong yes. Ask yourself, am I happy with the way that my body is right now? First answer is going to be the one that is from your guidance. You should be happy with the body that you have right now, even though it's imperfect or perfect or whatever, uh, if you're a perfectionist, of course. Ask yourself, am I happy with the amount of spiritual practice that I have in my life? Boom, first answer. That's your guidance. That's the truth that you know that you can filter out. Second is, but I'm doing my best, I tried and I don't have time, and all the excuses that come right after that. This is one of the methods that you can know. There's also kinesiology that people use, muscle testing, but if you haven't had any experience with that, I don't recommend doing it by yourself, except for one of them, which kind of works, which is quite amazing. Now, behind it is the theory that our subconscious is connected to our body, and our body knows better than we do what we actually need. So in order to have a conversation with our higher self, we're actually going to ask the body a Boolean question. In other words, a yes, no question. When we ask, all we have to do is stand very, very still. And then when the answer is yes, we will be pulled forward. When the answer is no, we will be pulled backwards. Okay. And please, just pause the video and try it. Try it with the bigger questions that you don't have an answer for. For example, do I enjoy life? And then you'll get like this, yes, or a hesitant yes, or maybe you'll get a pull like, whoa, all the way to the back and say, okay, man, that's, that's kind of true. Uh, do I need any medicine? Do the supplements that I take actually help my body? Should I date this and that? What, if I, you know, what are the biggest things, am, am I mature enough to be in a responsible relationship, for example? Should I do this degree? Am I going to enjoy this degree in the future? All these type of things, do this exercise. It's really simple. It's a way to contact your guides as well. So the last advice I can really tell you is that the more guidance you will accept into your life, the more trusting you are in the creator, God's, the universe's path for you, the more easily your intuition is going to talk to you and that is your higher guidance. In other words, the thoughts are going to be pure thoughts. They're going to be thoughts about how I serve others. They're going to be thoughts about how I can be happy in my life. Simple thoughts because the higher vibration you get, life becomes really simple. Why? There's less thoughts. There's less ego. There's more awareness, there's more happiness, tranquility, there's more observation, there's more, much more being than anything that you can imagine. And I know that you know because when you compare yourself in the last two or three years, you've probably noticed that we're all, all making big jumps in our spiritual personal evolution. So my friends, thank you very much for watching me all the way to the end. My name is Ray. If you like to comment, ask any questions, write them down here. I try to follow through and answer all the different comments at least once a week, at least once a week. Uh, can't guarantee, but I, tr I do try my best. If you want more of my stuff, go on raymore.com. Check out my full online schedule as well. Namaste, and I will see you in my next video.